I hope you guys are good. Welcome back to Cases World. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new, welcome. I really hope you will be staying with us until to death do us apart. Because like, if you subscribe, then you stuck with me. <laughs> All jokes aside, welcome. I really appreciate you taking your time to watch this video. Today, we are gonna do a video on atomic habits this was the latest novel i read and i really wanted to share about it in bits and pieces briefly but the reason why i had soft life playing in this video when it began is because this book this book <laughs> this one do you see it is what is going to help you get a soft life because this book literally teaches you how to get rid of your bad habits and how to inherit new good habits it's really a must get for everyone especially if you want to improve your life especially if you want a soft life especially if you want good things to happen in your life so the book is by james clear um four laws of changing a habit if you want to change a habit make it obvious make it easy make it attractive make it satisfying so if you want to get rid of a bad habit make it hard make it unattractive make it unsatisfying and make it invisible i promise you it is helping me so i really hope it helps you too as an individual so 1.1 to even begin with we need to understand what a habit is and james clear says that a habit is a behavior that is repeated so much so that it becomes automatic so the first law of um, changing behavior is make it obvious and james clear says that in order to make a behavior obvious there are two ways to do it he speaks of a formula uh, forgot the name of the formula i think it's implementation but it focuses on the time and the location so he says that if you want to get used to a habit what you do is you pair it with the time and the location i will read my novel every 6 a.m on my bedroom carpet so eventually my mind gets trained to know every time i'm sitting on the carpet it is time for me to read my novel link specific locations and specific times to things if you get used to the table being your study area and the bed for sleeping chances of you falling asleep when you're sitting on your table trying to study are going to be very slim but if you try studying in your bed which you also use for sleeping there are no specific locations for your habits and if everything gets into intertwined so <laughs> it might mess up with your habit formation. But if you have specific things, specific areas for specific habits, it helps you maintain them and yeah. And then he also speaks of habit staking. So habit staking is uh, pairing an old habit with a new habit. So if you love eating, but you struggle with washing your dishes, you pair um, after eating, I will wash my dish. So if you do not wash your dish, it means the next time you want to eat, you're not going to have a plate to eat because you didn't wash your dish. And because it's going to mess up with your patterns, you are going to train your mind to get used to the fact that after every meal I eat, I have to wash my plate if I want to have a plate for the next meal that I'm going to have. That's the first rule. Make it obvious. And then the second rule of um, habit change he says make it easy nobody wants to do anything difficult he gives an example to say that um the reason why we tend to play a lot on our phones watch netflix watch tv is because those things require less of our energy they don't require us using too much strength they're not difficult it's easy to lie down in bed and watch netflix and that is why 
people procrastinate because it takes so much more energy for you to study or clean that room than it does for you to just lay down and watch Netflix. So if you want to train your mind to get used to a habit, then you need to make it easy for yourself. Make it easy and make the bad habits difficult. Make it so difficult that you want nothing to do with that bad habit because the moment you think about it, you're like, yo, it's going to require so much of me. Do I really want to put myself through that just for a glimpse of happiness? Nobody, nobody wants anything difficult. That is why we want a soft life because nobody wants a difficult life. We all want to live lavish, but we don't want to do what we got to do to live a lavish life. We stick onto habits that are bad and yet we want good things in life. Make it make sense. I'm sorry, but <laughs> what's your plan in life? And then the next one is the next rule or law of behavior change is make it attractive. And with make it attractive, he calls it temptation bundling. So what you do is you link a habit that you need with a habit that you want. A habit that you need, for example, to keep healthy would be for you to exercise. And a habit that you want would be for you to, I don't know, watch Netflix. So um, train yourself to watch Netflix as you exercise. If it means you're cycling, cycle while you watch Netflix. So you are you're attracted to it because you know the only time you get to watch Netflix is if you're exercising. And it benefits you because you get to do what you want to do and you get to do what you need to do for yourself. And he also speaks of joining a culture where your desired behavior is a normal behavior. Because if you want to start eating healthy and you're going to be hanging out with people eating donuts, sorry, what are you doing with your life? Because what you're doing right now is the habit you're trying to change you're just making it, you're just giving it easy access to you. You are making it attractive to you because you are continuously seeing it. Think about it when you chill with people that are actually eating healthy foods and they're enjoying it and they're in love with it. Doesn't that attract you? Isn't that attractive to some sort of degree? He emphasizes using the two minute rule. What he says is, um, if you study, the reason why we are so quick to myself included quit something because it's difficult is because of the gap between us and our goal you need to make it easy for you to reach your goal so for example if i start exercising today because i want to get my summer body for example and i exercise today for an hour when tomorrow comes I'm going to think five times if I really want to because one entire hour, that was a lot. One point one, my body hurts. And I must do this again. Is it really worth it? Because the thing also is the fact that bad habits are so easy at reach and so attractive. Give you a quick example. People who smoke. They smoke because it gives them an instant gratification. They smoke. They're stress-free. They start to feel some sort of happiness. Yes, it does cause some sort of danger, but the danger is far off. And people want results now. People want something that's going to make me happy now. Something that's not going to stress me now. And if I'm going to exercise for an hour already, I'm stressed. Chances of me coming back to do it tomorrow? Honey, <laughs> I'll see you. But it ain't going to be tomorrow. <laughs> So he just says, have a two minute rule. Um, I actually recently did it. So I recently started cycling because I just want to get in shape. And the first time I did it, I did it straight up two minutes. And with me, I use the two minute rule in that way. Every single day, I added two more minutes. Every single day. So the first day I did two minutes. I cycled for two minutes. Yes, there was not much change, but the good thing about this book is says, Tiny changes can lead to a big change eventually. You might not see the results now, but eventually you will see them. The second day, I did four minutes. The third day, I did six minutes. The fourth day, I did eight minutes. 
the fifth day i did 10 minutes by the time i got to 10 minutes i could feel that no you know what my body's getting a bit used to it so what i did know was i linked cycling to something that i love doing so i decided i love watching this a uh, soapy called the queen so i decided every time i'm watching the queen i'm going to be cycling and the queen is about 22 minutes without the adverts so if i want to continue watching i need to keep cycling the moment i stop cycling i switch off the queen and because i want to watch the queen every day and i want to finish the episode because i want to be caught up with the drama i'm going to have to keep cycling for me to finish that episode and the episodes literally the, it plays monday to friday so do you understand monday to friday i need to make sure i exercise in order for me to watch it because if i don't exercise i'm going to be five days behind and then when saturday and sunday comes i link it to something else but it, it personally helped me because now i don't even have to be watching the queen for me to cycle i literally know every day every morning i need to cycle if i'm not here in the morning i do it the next day the, another thing he mentions is that don't skip something for more than one day if ever something happens today that stops you from doing your habit make sure you do it the next day don't skip more than one day because the moment you do you're breaking your cycle you are breaking your habit formation and that's something that's really helped me like i mean if i really 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 can't cycle then i do some sort of exercise for that specific day so that i know that my body did do a bit of something back onto that example that i gave about smoking and um people wanting to do it because it satisfies them in the moment that takes us to the fourth law actually of behavior change satisfaction we want to be satisfied as humans i mean that is the reason why we go work at certain places the reasons why we date certain people is because we feel that they satisfy some sort of need in our life the reason why we study certain things because they satisfy our mind or where we're trying to go in life or career wise in some specific way we all want satisfaction and that is why it's important to make sure that the habits you're trying to grow satisfy you in some way because if they don't chances are you are gonna live it and we don't want to leave good habits because we want a soft life. <laughs> and in closing, I just want to read this. James says, um, with a big enough why, you can overcome every how. So this should be your motivation if you're trying to grow in your habit. With a big enough why. Why do I want to lose weight? I want to lose weight because I want to have a popping body for summer. And that why overcomes any how. How I'm going to do it, I don't know if I'm going to run, I don't know if I'm going to walk, I don't know if I'm going to cycle. Like I said, if I can't cycle on a certain day, I make sure I do some sort of exercise. Why? Because my why is more superior than my how. So I'm going to find a way on how to do it to get it done. And I think that's something we should all remember because we need to remember that the small changes will transform your life, they'll transform your relationships, they will transform your career. And they should really be something we stick on just because you cycled and the what you're expecting to what lose weight in one day, it's not gonna happen, honey. Forget about it. <laughs> Serious note. Um we should really let go of the idea of expecting results in one day. Good things are always worth the wait. There's nothing exciting about getting quick results. So yeah, that's just that. Well, thank you for watching. I know this was a bit different, but I really hope you enjoyed it. And I really hope that you took a few lessons on how to change your habits. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you pop by next time. Don't forget, please, if you're not going to take my advice from this, find a way to let go of bad habits and learn good habits because, Mamela, we're going to leave you. Because I saw us in the we soft life because I saw us in the bad habits. <laughs> so please, let's do this. Let's get it right and let's go live our soft life. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs>